Okay, excellent. Okay, well, uh, hello everyone and welcome to a new episode in the Quantum Server uh, Open Webinar Series on Scientific Computing Applications. So today we have the pleasure of having uh, Devanshi Arora as our guest speaker from uh, Quantum Computing UK. And um, today she will be presenting on the following topic. So software methods um, for mitigating single qubit errors in superconducting qubits. And uh, you can find some more information on her presentation in this slide. Uh, in particular, so today she will be introducing a new software method that uh, she developed together with her colleagues uh, that can help to mitigate quantum errors and can also map virtual qubits in a circuit to physical qubits by minimizing the resulting error. And you can find some more information on this uh, topic in the following paper, which is referenced here and which uh, uh, has already been distributed via the mailing list. So uh, Devanshi, uh, so you're ready to present now. The floor is yours and I will just make you host in order to allow you to share your screen. Thank you, Nadia. Yeah. So if I can start right now. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so I just want to make sure everything. So these slides are based on my uh, software project named as Meter Mitigation of Qubit Errors in Superconducting Qubits on Single uh, single Qubit Circuits. So I want to go through some basic concepts of superconducting qubits and quantum circuits and why we choose superconducting qubits, which are also known as artificial atoms. So, so yeah, this is a transition from classical to quantum computer. And uh, this is the flow chart in which you can see that basically all the processing, which includes initial state, encoding of the circuit, encoded circuit, processing, final state, and measurement, is all, all all done in a quantum computer, which is available to us as a as a cloud uh, server right now. And I'm using IBM open source software, which is known as Quisca. That's a cloud quantum computer provided to uh, like it's a public it's publicly accessible. So I've used that to perform my uh, circuit and to optimize my circuit and to run my circuit in IBM's quantum computer. And I coded in Python. And that's how I sent my code to IBM's quantum computer and we, I measured that. So basically, uh, I'll come to my circuit and my code in the following slides. So this is a transition from classical computer to a quantum computer and how the processing is, take in, uh, have processing is taken place in a quantum computer and sent back after measurement to a classical computer, which is on our screen, in which we, uh, on which we can see the results after the after the performance has been done on the quantum computer. So, uh, superconducting qubits or artificial atoms, electrical circuits that can be fabricated on a chip, just like the processors in today's classical computers. Uh, I've like uh, we all know IBM quantum computers use use transform qubits. So why they use these? Because there, there are many, many, um, many ways of using qubits, which is one of those are transmon or transmon qubits. The others are uh, iron trapped and like these. So IBM quantum computers usually use uh, transmon qubits. So superconducting qubits or artificial atoms, as said, in addition to making fabrication relatively easy, such electrical circuits make it possible to design the parameters of the qubits to a much greater extent and sometimes also, the, also to tune these parameters in situ during an experiment. So making the circuits out of superconducting material and operating them at temperature below the critical temperature and this is the main uh, answer to why a low temperature ha it's, it's, is the main requirement for a quantum computer or quantum processor to work because of the superconducting properties. This is the, this is the starting of a qubit, like how, how the people invented qubits and it's a start from Josephine junctions. And this is a bit history. 
of why uh, superconducting qubits are actually used. So I guess I can skip to the uh, circuit here and not in history. So this Josephson uh, junctions are two types: Cooper pair box and the transmon. The IBM circuits use the transmon qubits. This is this is nothing but a basic quantum integrated circuit in front of you, in which an inductor and this, which is L and its capacitor which is C are used. Like it is an LC circuit. So good, this is the basics of Cooper Ware box. A Cooper Ware box is the simplest variant of Josephson junction, and the box of a superconducting island connected to a Josephson junction to the outside world. This this connection allows the interaction of the qubits to the outside world, and this is how we can control or measure the qubits. Transmon qubit, which is uh, an introduction to the transmon, which is a transmission line stranded plasma oscillation circuit, which is formed by adding another capacitance in parallel with the Josephson junctions in super in superconducting charge qubit designed to have reduced uh, sensitivity to charge noise. Uh, Four transmon qubits consist of four quantum buses, which is the buses which are used for store and transform information between independent qubits in a quantum computer. And this uh, the, the uh, sensitivity to noise ratio, which is EJ, which is the junction energy, and EC is the capacitance energy. Transmon achieves like uh, by measuring or increasing this ratio. This is the continuation of the circuit. So disadvantage of transmon is that if we increase this EC by EJ, though results in sensitivity to charge noise, but this is this also complicates the device operation. As two-level system or quantum freeze takes place, quantum freeze is decoherence of the qubit property, which is that which is that they no longer remain qubits as seen in the previous uh, slide. That harmonicity is a uh, necessity for a qubit to work. And next slide, yeah. the criteria that should be fulfilled. I guess this is a history, so I I think I will jump to my project. Yeah, so this is how. Uh, just it's not going back. Yeah. So types of errors that can be faced by a quantum circuit, which are which is known as bit flip errors and phase flip errors. Errors go goes continuously, not exactly flips. It, it means that uh, there are two types of errors which a quantum circuit can face. Bit flip errors is named as when when an in input bit is supposedly one and we get and we don't get one as the output bit. So basically, one turns to zero or vice versa. And phase flip is when minus minus a qubit turns to positive qubit. So there's a flip in the phase of the input and output qubits. So there's there's a little detail on bit flip errors. It occurs while copying data, and one of the bits in the data changes, as already said. Value of one incorrectly becomes zero, and while well, that this causes a bit flip error, like there's a change in the value. Similarly, phase flip errors involves rotation of a qubit by an angle without a flip. So there's a change in angle of the uh, qubit. So the method I introduced in my uh, project is known as quantum error correction. So uh, as we as we uh, came to know that there are few errors we face in the circuit. So what so what exactly a layman can think to decrease this error so that a quantum circuit can run properly or without any error. So one can think that if we run the circuit many times on the device, that means like the, uh, it's in quantum terms it's it's known as short. If we increase the shorts of our algorithm in the in the quantum operator, which means we, if we can run the circuit more than one time and increase the shorts, and the maximum shorts can go even to ten thousand. So in my uh, project, I've used eight one nine two shorts. So if if we are increasing the shorts, then the then we think that errors can reduce, and it does actually to to a some extent. But there's also we also face uh, and redundancy error. Like we cannot run the circuit, and there are many complex circuits. There are many simple circuits and many complex circuits. This work can work in in simpler circuits, in which we have left less uh, less number of gates and less number of measurement algorithms. But there are also complex circuits in which quantum random numbers have to be generated, in which quantum fly robots have to be made. There are many various projects in which we have complex circuits, 
so what we don't have any technique to counter that error or counter these errors in complex sockets so that's what i actually tried to figure this out in my project as also my this this the major disadvantage of my project is that it only works in single single qubit errors in single qubit uh, sockets quantum sockets and not in multiple qubits in single qubits my my project can uh, solve the bit flip errors and even phase flip errors and it is just not 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 at as complex as uh, as as to go with various big algorithms but this is just a some normal technique which is known as quantum error correction in this a set of methods to protect quantum states from the effects of environmental noise and decoherence which again said it protects the qubits to not enter quantum fields which means that the qubits still have the quantum nature or still obey quantum laws for running and for for, for saving and storing and trans transferring the information QEC, which is also known as quantum error correction, are built on the theory of quantum codes. While the bit flip and phase flip errors prove that it is possible to design a QEC, which means quantum error correction code, capable of correcting a finite set of errors, correcting bit flip errors. So how? This is the first technique. How uh, QEC have been used to correct bit flip errors using bit flip code. In this, two ancillary qubits, which is also known as help. help free qubits is mapped or measured with the logical qubit which is a single phi is a representation of phi theta is a representation of a qubit and the this is an uh, a normal block diagram in which two ancillary qubits is mapped and in the last as you can see uh, as you can see here a toffley gate is applied which can which helps to measure the ancillary qubit to the logical qubits this is the same circuit just an addition of hadamard gates to the logical qubit and two ancillary qubits is added it, uh, in other words it is a diagram of a three qubit phase flip error correction circuit e phase this e box basically uh, is a box which corrects the flip like it's, it's just made by my me and this for some m o it just helpful for understanding that three hadamard gates are applied here in when it's not phased when a e phase block is not applied and again this c not gates is applied across to h h gates again h gates are applied and in the end only one in only this thing is uh, different from the initial circuit because they have to measure like measure is the is prime is prime is of prime importance because uh, until unless we don't measure our circuit we cannot control or see how it performs and every error every every output depends on the measurement the qubit count on ibm devices as we all know ibm ibm uh, q provides 15 devices to public access in which uh, like the largest ibm devices are 53 qubits and these the first two are one of a uh, two of the examples of how what devices have been provided by ibm by ibm q uh, london which is, which is enabling five qubits to be performed IBM T16 Melbourne is 15 qubits. This is the busiest IBM device and the most qubit IBM device which is accessible to the public. And I've used all the devices which you can see in the next slides. Also, this is an error correction code known as Shor code. And uh, again, eight ancillary. This is an example of a little bit complex circuit in which an eight ancillary qubits is uh, mapped to the logical qubits. Again, I've, as I told, if we use more ancillary qubits. then more complexity will be added to so circuit to reduce this we have adopted this method for mitigation and not error correction for software single qubit errors on superconducting quantum bits so this is my met, uh, proposed mitigation method and it is a software method which is operated on qubit so the major like i'll say secret of this is mapping the logical qubits to the physical qubits which which will read out the less error prone qubits and will allow the toffley gate which is a measurement gate to measure the less error prone error prone qubits so in this we don't even have to run our circuit more than like 10000 shots or something it can be done even as 1024 shots and 819 obviously there will be some changes in the output but 
yeah so we don't have to make a complex circuit like this uh, previously we don't have to use short code or grover's algorithm to uh, decrease the error and again even complex circuits are used in previous techniques and still error is there and still error is uh, like not even reduced maximum to 5% is reduced or like nothing is much more progress in previous uh, techniques when this technique there's a um, uh, map mapping technique is used and this very simple one page code for this and code as said earlier it is available on the link of the paper and uh, yeah so ma ma mapping is the main uh, sorry mapping is the main secret of like how i use quantum error correction code to decrease the errors and do decrease error and, and uh, mitigating the read out errors in only and the only limitation of this is single qubit it can only be effective in single qubit of circuit so in the image you can see it's a normal plain circuit in which three qubits are used and c3 is the classical register in which the measurement of each qubit has been done using z which is the measurement gate and xx gate has been also used this is the mechanism in which logic circuits the three qubits which gives the like logical qubits are mapped to the physical qubit physical qubits basically are the user qubits and u2 gate error and c0 gate error have been measured this is just a graph of the output and the blue green yellow these lines you can see that there's a mapping being done and yellow goes to like two the different mapping uh, pathways have been adopted for mapping logical gates and physical qubit gates or physical qubit sorry and single qubit u2 error rate and c0 error rate have been compared as the output so uh, again like i mentioned in the paper here uh, map maps logical qubits to physical qubits with the least error as i have said it will choose the qubits which will have like less error prone they are less error prone and they are choosing how they are choosing by mapping with cub logical qubits to the physical qubits mitigates read out errors and single qubit errors like it it well i have i've developed this with a co-author in quantum computing uk this is a snippet of the output i received in like conda when i was running my uh, algorithm list of qubits on the device q0 q1 q2 q3 and q4 these are the uh, qubits q1 qubit second qubit third qubit and the fourth qubit uh, fourth qubit with the measurement qubit in which the read out error and the u3 gate error have been as you can see it's where it's reaching 0.0112 it's very less and like it's 0.00115 and again 0.00118 it's very less in comparison to the previous in shawl algorithms or any grover algorithm and a uh, virtual map of physical one second the last line huh? virtual map to physical qubits it's it says the mapping uh, of the logical to the physical qubit of qubits with 0 2 and 3 and how i've observed the re results which is 35.5% performance increase in ibm q london ibm q london is one of the ibm q device there's an in increased performance in particular this device works best on devices with high variance across qubit errors so this is the uh, graph this is in short the whole project here this is the graph of the optimized performance of optimized uh, to versus unoptimized circuit and the probability of u3 gate error u3 yellow one is the optimized in the basically this is our method the yellow one describes our uh, the method we have adopted and read out optimized and probability of unoptimized blue one is the already adopted method and as you can see and as you can see that uh, in IBM XQ London, which is this one, we are obtaining the highest results, which is around 90% optim optimization. And again, the lowest received with unoptimized circuit is 50%. So there's an increment of 50 to 90, so 40% increase in the efficiency of the device or of the quantum computer using QEC code. So, yes. That's what that was a brief um, description of my project. Um, thank you.
Right, thank you very much, Devanshi, for your presentation. <laughs> it was very interesting, thank you. Um, unfortunately, I'm very sorry for the low attendance rate today. I can see that there's only Mr. Huranin who is present in the, <laughs> in oh, the okay. presentation at the moment. So he's actually our guest speaker from yesterday. Um, so I don't know, Mr. Huranin, whether you have any questions uh, to Devanshi at this uh, point. Okay. Um, well, it's not my my sort of core field, but uh, I I know a couple of people who do some some research in this area. Um, quite often, um, people actually define logical qubits from physical qubits, where there are fewer logical than the physical ones. Um, you seem to be in, inversing this inverting this problem by selecting the best behaved physical qubits to embed the the logical ones. It's, it's kind of interesting that, um, that this happens because the reason that people usually, as, as I guess you know, define logical qubits um, is and, uh, uh, they can you. the error. Uh, they, they optimize the logical qubits only by using complex circuits. So my approach is by mapping the logical qu existing mm -hmm. logical qubits with uh, the physical qubits. So basically not increasing the gates, which is, which adds to the complexity of the circuit, but by increasing the mechan like the way of optimization, mm -hmm. adopting the other way of optimization. So this is, this is like sure. yes. a promising approach for if, if I, like I'm also working on multiple qubits, like this is only single qubit errors and people usually use multiple qubits because they have, like there's so many problems to encounter in quantum yes. circuits. So I'm working on multiple if I, like I'm, working on that because actually that goes into more complexity of the mm -hmm. code yes so, sure i mean yeah. the, the 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 numbers i've seen for for the 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 approach of mapping from physical to, to logical is that you have many many more physical qubits um and um as a result um when you are looking for the the best physical qubits to instead use in a logical case how um good do they have to be in terms of error and similarity between each other and noise in order for this 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 mapping to be stable because um you know the reason for for taking a very large number of physical qubits and distilling to to a small number of logical ones is you can you can build error correction in that direction and yeah Oh, so what exactly is the question? So, so I guess the question is how sensitive are you to noise in the oh the sensitive to noise? Right. So I've just shared in that graph. Like, yeah. Yeah. So it's less sensitive to noise because because like if I'm no, I'm not I'm not running firstly I'm not running in um, my many times my circuit in in the device. So yeah. As I'm yeah. running my like that's also known as shorts i'm using 8192 shorts in my circuits so as less i'm running so this is less subject to the environmental error again it's uh, it's just a software method so i'm not implemented as sure. On, sure. on their sure. like on a physical on their computer obviously it's a yeah. software method and so uh, also the results are like how decre how uh, decrement is the error obtainable in the output so if i'm like i'm getting very less error so that also is equivalent to how subjected is to the noise sure so there's an increment of uh, from 50 percent i guess if to be extract 48.2 percent to 94.3 or 6 i don't remember exactly of 90 percentage so there's this increment of uh, decrease increment of uh, gaining the decrease decreasence in the error so if you can understand like what i mean Sure. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, in terms of this translating into into tolerances on the physical qubits, um, so you have a population of these things where there are some some good ones, some bad ones. Um, yeah. But what is what is the sort of limit in terms of how um, identical the qubits in the good set have to be? You know, if there is there is a variation in um, properties of these things of a few percent is that going to cause problems or is it relatively robust if you were talking around 50 percent there of these things show show larger variation but can yeah, you put a so I guess variation can only be experimentalists 
in terms of how good their qubits have to become? Q, I, there's no change in already existing qubits. So how good qubits have to become is See, in, in input qubits will always remain same. Only there's a mapping of those qubits which are not, sure. which uh, the result will not be affected by the errors or the decoherence which occurs when the circuit is completed. Sure. The input and there's no variation in input or it, sure. I'm not changing those. I'm just mapping and taking out the best of them. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, that, that was more, more my kind of question that if you turn this into a design goal, to feed back to people for, for, for experimental hardware. Yes, um, yeah, I'm actually, I'm already you're talking. You're maximizing what you get from uh, the, the, the equipment that is there in terms of distilling the best um, behavior out of this. But if, if you were going to propose to someone the kinds of optimized machine that would give you a better. Yeah, actually, for that thing, I've already contacted. IBM people so they are providing me three uh, advanced systems for yeah. like it's not it, it is not publicly accessible so they will be providing like actually talk to them day before only so mm -hmm. they're providing me three advanced DS in their systems and which which have also like maximum I only had 15 qubits so mm -hmm. there are 32 qubits IBM systems in which I will be running the code and will be seeing the output and okay. from that I can actually fall down to a conclusion that what exactly I can do with this project and also plus to that like funding is required because uh, this is only for transmon qubits as, as IBM only uses transmon qubits so I think I can also run the same code in iron trapped superconducting qubits or photonic circuits like there are many companies which are using other than IBM mechanism for their quantum yeah. circuits so as soon as I get access to their systems which is not publicly available so I guess I can run in those systems also. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Huranin, for your questions. Um, so I, in this case, since there is no one else attending the webinar, unfortunately, I propose to put an end to today's uh, session. So thank you very much again, Devanshi, for your presentation. As I said, it will be uploaded on YouTube. So hopefully many more people will watch it in the future and we'll be able to contact you by email to ask your further questions. So thank you again very much, everyone, for attending and uh, goodbye. Have a good day. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.